Well, hemifacial spasm is a slightly unusual condition where half of the face starts to become irritable and goes into a spasm. Um, and the patients may begin to notice it as a eye twitch on one side or a mouth twitch, but it often progresses where half of the face starts to go into a erratic rhythmic spasming. Often uh, it can be confused with um, just irritability or uh, nervousness or tics and so forth, but when it clearly develops, um, it develops uh, pretty much exactly in half the face and it involves the neck muscles, the chin, uh, the, the, the eyebrows and, and um, facial muscles on one side and uh, it, be, it, it can become very distressing uh, to the patient to have this condition. Many times when we see patients with hemifacial spasm, it's progressed over many months or years and initially it was very mild and they didn't know what they had and then it eventually becomes clear uh, what the condition is. Um, the, there are several other uh, conditions that um, can mimic hemifacial spasm uh, like blepharospasm, which is both eyes going into spasm or blinking, but if, if it occurs on both sides, it's definitely not classic hemifacial spasm. The most common cause of hemifacial spasm is a small blood vessel um, in the back of the brain, and it presses on the facial nerve, which controls uh, the facial muscles on half the face and the upper neck. And so it starts, to, uh, it starts to irritate the nerve and sends it into uh, these paroxysmal spasms of the face. Often the symptoms can be worse if patients get a little nervous or irritable or they go out in public. Um, and what we notice in patients uh, that uh, were progresses to a significant extent is they become shy and they, they become a little bit introverted. They tend to stay out of public places because people uh, uh, react to the, to the way they're looking and uh, so it's very distressing to them, especially if they have a, a, a job that involves interfacing with the public on a regular basis. So it's important for these patients to uh, get effective treatment for this condition and it improves their life greatly. Hemifacial spasm is not hereditary uh, that we know. Uh, it's what's called sporadic. It can occur in anybody. And it's thought that um, as we age a little bit, uh, the vessels become slightly elongated. And if this certain vessel or several vessels uh, press against the facial nerve in this particular location, it sends it into a hyper irritable state and it starts to cause spasming of the face, which is, which is quite disabling for patients. So people have tried uh, various treatments for hemifacial spasm. And initially, um, people tried uh, anticonvulsant medication or anxiolytics like uh, Valium and uh, other uh, benzodiazepine medications. And these only have a mild effect. They're really not effective at, at controlling the symptoms. The uh, most effective um, uh, treatment is called microvascular decompression, where surgery is done to actually move the vessel away from the nerve and then put a small pad in there so the vessel can no longer contact the nerve and, um, and make it irritable and cause the spasms. The other uh, treatment that um, has come along in the last 20 years is called Botox, botulinum toxin, and as people may know, it can be done for wrinkles or, or tension headaches, migraine headaches, um, a lot of other uh, spasmodic conditions of the muscles. Well, the way Botox injections work is botulinum toxin or Botox blocks the neuromuscular junction. So the nerve uh, releases a chemical that then contacts the muscle and then causes it to activate. So uh, uh, the Botox is injected and it blocks the transmission or blocks the uh, activation of the muscle by that, uh, the chemical that's released from the end of the nerves. So with the Botox injection, um, it requires repeated treatments, usually every three months. Um, and uh, depending on the extent of the hemifacial spasm, different portions of the face can be injected with a very small needle. Um, normally, it's, it's quite effective. Uh, 
but the patients go through a period where in, in some instances they could get a little weakness at the initial time of the injection that then wears off uh, at a certain time and they have a, a good period where it's controlled and then as it starts to wear off the, the spasms break through again and they require uh, re -tre repeat treatments. So what we found is that in, in patients that um, the, the, the hemifacial spasm becomes more and more severe, um, they'll tend to not want to pursue the, the Botox injections any longer, especially if they're a younger patient because it requires a continuous schedule of injections. And so they may choose to have the microvascular decompression, uh, which removes the vessel from the nerve, re removes the irritative focus and the cause of the hemifacial spasm. And that usually has about a 90 to 95 percent effectiveness rate of eliminating the, the condition. And it's quite dramatic. Uh, the condition is usually eliminated in the recovery room after the, after the procedure is done. Uh, so it's a quite, quite a dramatic treatment and highly successful. The success rate of uh, microvascular decompression um, is in the 90 to 95 percent range. There are certain uh, known associated complications. They're rare, but they can occur, such as uh, decreased hearing or uh, weakness in the facial nerve after the, uh, the microvascular decompression. Uh, the, the hearing nerve, the auditory nerve, and the uh, facial nerve are in close approximation with each other. So by moving the vessel, uh, there can be a temporary problem with hearing, or in rare cases, there can be a permanent or even a complete hearing loss on that side. But fortunately, these cases are rare. The, uh, the way the surgery is done is a small incision is done behind the ear, um, and the the posterior fossa or the, the, the space um, right along where the cerebellum is located um, is entered with a high-powered microscope and that's the, the cerebellum is retracted and where the facial nerve um, enters the brain stem is where the vessel is usually found and it's padded away, uh, moved away and dissected away from the facial nerve and then a small pad is placed to keep it from contacting the nerve in the future. So it's a it's normally a very short operation um, and, um, like I said, it's extremely effective in, in taking care of the problem. There are certain risks for open surgery for microvascular decompression. Those include the normal risk factors of any surgery, including problems with the heart and lungs and so forth, and infection, bleeding, uh, leakage of spinal fluid and, and those types of things. But Normally it's tolerated quite well and uh, uh, patients are in the hospital several days after the surgery and can then go home. And the, the, the symptoms are often gone immediately.